Hello friends, and it's Funky Play Brothers, and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube. And today I'm reading He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, Tales of Eternia, The Hunt for Mothman. Uh, New York Times best-selling author Gregory Mon, book one, chapter 20, a Netflix original series. Now let us lead. Adam raced out of the alleyway to the street in front of the pub where his two friends waiting in impatiently crashed spotted him first what happened she asked do you find him i found him adam answered he agreed to help us we're going to meet him in the forest apparently he has family nearby interesting cringer remarked um adam where's the sword eugenia grabbed it he answered and before we go anywhere i need to get it back cringer growled leave this one to me cubs adam smiled and crashed patted the tiger's back no offense, but you're kind of old, she said. Plus, they didn't say no tigers are allowed inside. Did say no tigers are allowed inside. The tiger leaped forward and pounced onto the wooden door, knocking it flat to the floor inside. The crowded pub turned silent. The stench of sweat and mold was almost as powerful as toxic perfume. Cringer reared back on his hand, hind paws and let out a huge whine window rattling growl and sprang to the chaos. Crass crouched, staggered her feet, leaned forward and lowered her head right shoulder as if she were ready to power up. Adam grabbed her to, at the elbow. Wait, she, he said. We need to help him, Crass shouted. We don't want to make any more of a scene, Adam replied. And you know how proud he is. He wants to show that he still has some fight in him, even without the power of gristle. He has Give him a chance. One minute, Crass snapped. That's all. But they didn't need to wait that long. Inside the bar, bar they heard someone yell, and then one of the half-broken front windows shattered completely as Cringer flew backward on, out onto the street. See, Crass said, we sh should have helped him. The tiger rolled over onto his side. Adam feared he was seriously hurt. Then he noticed his old friend clutching something wrapped in thick canvas smiling the tiger crossed the bungalow onto the gobblestones the canvas the canvas unfurled revealing the handle hill over the blade of a familiar sword adam didn't need to wait for cross or cringer to urge him to grab at the weapon he dashed to the tiger's side and wrapped his fingers around the handle the chaos inside the pub only increased as he heard eugenia roar get outside and fetch me that sword Cringer struggled to his paws. I believe it's time we powered up, Cubs. Before the crowds poured out and spotted his face, Adam wrapped both hands around the sword, the sword of power, held it in front of him, and declared, By the power of Grayskull! Lightning crackled in the sky. Bright yellow bolts of mystical energy shot down, shot down and into the swords. And the blade grew, doubling and then tripling in size. Adam felt himself expanding from the inside out. He never felt better or stronger in his life. As he raised the sword high and in stone, I have the power! Streaks and sparks shot out of the dim shone on Crass's helmet. Armored rocket-powered boots covered her legs. Her helmet transformed into gray skull infused helm of destruction and energy flowed all around her. Meanwhile, Cringer grew to three times his normal size. His metal claws re red, radiated yellow. His head and back were encased in impenetrable armor, uh, and he roared so loud that the very buildings around them shook. When the energy settled and the sky cleared, the three heroes stood beside each other on the street. The ruffians steamed out of the pub. Two of the men quickly dashed back inside, having no interest in fighting the warriors. But at least two dozen thugs poured out, surrounding the friends. Eugenia sneered at, at Battlecat. You look different, Kitty. I see you brought friends, too. Have you changed your mind, Battlecat asked. We'd be happy to leave here in peace. No one's leaving without a fight, she snapped. I don't care who you got on your side yeah well that's a mistake rammy replied hey he man yes rammy leave her to me you two sweep up the rest of this garbage with pleasure battle cat girl the fight that ensued wasn't exactly a fair one the masters were outnumbered by eight to two and the thugs were armed with swords knives clubs and any weapon they could find one battle cat but the tiger swept away the attempting blow 
When he pounced on the man's chest, he nearly knocked him down and crushed the improvised weapon in his jaws. He man hardly even used his sword. He swung it once to knock down a knife thrown at his chest, but otherwise his hands were powerful enough. He was still getting used to his incredible strength, though, and he accidentally punched his first attacker straight through a wall. Thankfully, the man was huge, so the blow didn't hurt him permanently, but it was enough to convince the brute that he was going to win a fight against T-Man. Dazed, he stranged off through the side alley. Worried about hurting anyone too badly, T-Man tried to imagine he was merely swatting flies, not punching pirates. Even when he'd barely tap his attackers, though, he, they'd drop as if they'd been struck by sledgehammers. And then they punched him back. He didn't even feel it. One woman leaped off a cart and cracked a wooden chair over his head, and it actually tickled. The hostess was sitting upright against the side of her pub, dazed and, and defeated as Rami bounced between the buildings like an electrified pinball. In less than a minute, all of their attackers were either rolling on the ground, sitting against the wall, or hurrying away in the alleys. The owner didn't even have the strength to sneer. Fine, Eugenia said, you win. And that's the end of chapter 20. So, friends, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow us on social media, Funky Play Brothers, Funky Play Bros. Support our vlog at Cash App, the doll sign, Funky Play Bros. Thank you for watching. Bye.